Welcome back to our next class on How to Mortar 101. I'm Staff Sergeant Hegert, and we'll be going over dismounted operations today. Dismount operations, the primary times the mortar platoon will conduct dismounted movements is reconnaissance of the MFP, rub and gun, split section, the example being air assault operations. The mortar platoon dismounted movements differ from line platoon movements in size and shape, just giving basically the amount of guys we have in our platoon versus the line guys. And then just for you guys' essay, we've got two definitions for you, fixed and unfixed positions that I'll be using throughout the slideshow. Fixed position, the person will stay in their assigned spot throughout the whole movement. And then unfixed, the person is free to move throughout the formation during movement. Um, the big three right there is going to be PL, the second sergeant, platoon sergeant. Moving forward, we have movement formations that we'll be utilizing is fire team wedge, modified wedge, platoon column, and the file, and then our movement techniques being traveling, traveling overwatch, bounding and bounding overwatch. Being battalion mortars, we're not going to be pushed out ahead of Basically, any friendlies will be following the uh, attack or the talk where areas have already been cleared. And so about 90% of the time, we're going to be using uh, the traveling moving technique, possible traveling overwatch. You can see on the table, traveling is uh, enemy contact is not likely. And then traveling overwatch, contact possible. And then bounding overwatch is contact expected. Um, the biggest difference between the three is the distance between our squads. So in traveling, there's roughly 20 meters between each squad. Traveling overwatch, just one gun will push out roughly 50 meters ahead of the rest of the platoon. And then bounding overwatch, one gun again will get pushed out roughly 150 meters as long as they can still maintain visibility with the headquarters out in front of the platoon. And then our five principles of patrolling, planning, security, reconnaissance, control, and common sense. You fail one, you fail two. All right, MFP recon slash roving gun fire team wedge. The primary dismounted movement, movement during the reconnaissance of the MFP is the fire team wedge. For good vis visibility, each member is roughly 10 meters apart and 45 degrees. And then the only exception to that being the RTO is going to always remain next to the PL. And poor visibility, we're just going to collapse a little bit from 10 meters to 5 meters, still maintaining the 45 degrees. And then duties. The squad leader at the front of the formation is going to have frontal security, route selection, and land nav. The gunner will be the compass man, ensuring the element stays on the correct azimuth. And the reason that the squad leader is not doing this is because his primary focus is frontal security, so that way we will always maintain 360 degrees. And then the platoon leader, accountability, command and control, and then the second sergeant is going to help the PL with uh, accountability, command and control, and he's ultimately responsible for rear security. Going into the short halt. Short halt is used to pinpoint location, prepare and in place SNO, conduct SILs, and regain communications. So PL or the squad leader will give the hand and arm signal for a short halt. Um, just to let you guys know, anybody in the uh, formation can call a halt. The PL or the squad leader that's leading the formation are gonna be the primarily the main two that are gonna be calling the halt. So what that looks like is will basically form a box around the headquarters element of the fire team wedge. Uh, get 360 degrees of security. PL, section sergeant, and squad leader will meet in the middle and basically figure out why we're conducting a short halt, whether that's once again to pinpoint location, water break, injury, anything. And then duties at the short halt. So the squad leader is going to interlock sectors of fire. And then he's also going to 
make sure that the FTC chief in the rear is also interlocked with members of his squad. The platoon leader is going to pinpoint location, disseminate information, and then maintain command and control. Second sergeant is going to, once again, make sure that the chief is in place for rear security, and then he's going to continue to help with accountability, command and control. And then the RTO is going to ensure communication is up with platoon at the ORP. Now going into platoon column. So for good visibility, the platoon column is the primary movement formation of the mortar platoon. During this, we only have the 81 systems. This is due to the weight and size of the 120s. So going from right to left, following the direction of movement, we're going to have one gun followed by the PL and RTO, two gun followed by FDC and the second sergeant, three gun, four gun, and then the platoon sergeant and medic in the rear. So going back to our fixed versus unfixed uh, descriptions, so the, the PL, the section sergeant, and the platoon sergeant basically break the platoon up in thirds. So the PL is going to be at the front. That way he's basically has communication with that squad leader, making sure he's making the uh, staying on route. Section sergeant is going to be around FDC. That way, if we do get a fire mission in the middle of this, that he can disseminate that information and help um, FDC with the uh, fire commands. And then the platoon sergeant, who's ultimately respons responsible for accountability, is going to be in the rear. And he's going to be looking for any stragglers or anybody that's kind of going veering a little too far off left or right of the formation. And then the medic will also always be with the platoon sergeant. And then the 240s, as you can see, are going to be staggered throughout. Um, this is due so if we do get um, like chance contact with enemy, that we can we don't lose all 240s, or we can only or we have the ability to implement only what we need. All right, for poor visibility, <clears throat> this is going to go into modified column. So this should look roughly what we do every Thursday, with, which is just like a road march. Um, biggest difference is the spacing in um, the formation. So going from our platoon column to the modified column, basically we're just going to collapse the flanks, get into two columns, and then once again, PL, section sergeant, and platoon sergeant are going to be in unfixed positions in the center. And then the one gun squad leader will also be in the center because his responsibility still remain the same of uh, leading the platoon on the right route. Going to the platoon ORP, uh, this should look familiar from our deliberate occupation class. It just blown up so you can see exactly where each position is at the ORP. You have one gun at the 10 o'clock, three gun at the two o'clock, and four gun at the six o'clock. And then just to show you is an illustration from our delayed occupation, the platoon sergeant and medic creating a choke point um, in the ORP. If we're not gonna be pushing out to like a leader's recon or anything like that, they'd be in the center. We just wanted to reiterate the point of what we're talking about with the platoon sergeant medic creating that choke point. FDC is going to Make sure that we still have comms with hire. The platoon leader, second sergeant, is going to get ready for the leader's recon. And then you can see two gun, basically in a formation, um, conducting PCCs, PCIs for the leader's recon. And then once again, you can see the 240 positions and then 360 degree uh, interlocking sections of fire. All right, just to recap, for dismounted operation, movement refers to the shifting of forces on the battlefield. The key to moving successfully involves selecting the best combination of movement formations and movement techniques for each situation. Leaders consider the factors of METTC in selecting the best route and the appropriate formation and movement techniques. The leader's selection must allow the platoon to maintain cohesion, communication, momentum, 
and ultimately provide maximum protection. The platoon moves, <coughs> excuse me, the platoon movements will seek to avoid enemy contact. We will choose the movement that allows us to retain security and control to avoid loss of surprise and initiative, casualties, and mission failure. We will avoid chance enemy contact, move on cover to concealed routes, avoid likely ambush sites and other dangerous areas, practice camouflage, noise, light dis discipline, maintain 360 degree security. If we do make contact, we'll make contact with the smallest element possible, retain initiative to attack at the time and place of the unit's choice, and take active countermeasures such as using smoked, direct and indirect fire to suppress obscured suspected enemy positions. So that's our class on dismounted operations for our mortar platoon. If you have any questions, please refer to the slideshow that was just pre presented to you. Next class will be introduction to fire direction center procedures.